Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to Applications of Deep Learning with Washington University. This is Module 9, Regularization and Dropout. This is Part 2, L1 and L2 in TensorFlow. So in the previous part, we looked at how to, what L1 and L2 was and where the roots were. Now we're going to see how to use it in TensorFlow. So TensorFlow and L1, L2, these are techniques that can help to reduce overfitting. We saw conceptually what they were in the previous part, but now we're going to see how to actually make use of them and really see how they work together. Because in TensorFlow, and Kira's in particular of TensorFlow, you're allowed to use both of them. Uh, you can use them both simultaneously, and you can choose when you might want to do that. Largely, as far as knowing which one to use, that often comes down to experimentation. If you've got a lot of inputs that you think might not be that valuable, you can run L1 on it to potentially remove some of those inputs in the, in the neural network. You can also do importance ranking, which we see in a subsequent module, and that shows you how to how to determine which inputs are the most important and you might want to remove some of those because they, that can definitely have a positive impact on your on your training so if you if you bump up l1 you're having the neural network essentially do that removal for you l2 is just a general a general reduction in uh, the weights of the neural network overall so you definitely want to experiment with both of those and look at dropout as well. You can really use all three of these simultaneously if you if you so desire. So the thing with L1 and L2, they have a lot of names. So L1, L2, um, uh, Ridge and or Lasso and Ridge, their curves are also referred to as Laplace and Gaussian. Because if you look at overall the curves of these, if you plot the L1 and L2, uh, the way that these are calculated as the weights go to these various um, various values, you'll see that they do they do shrink the weights. Um, are they they smooth out the the weight calculation and remove the sign the the magnitude from that. So what we are seeing here, the most important part is right here around zero, and this shows you why L1 tends to essentially, it's very abrupt at zero, it, it, it tends to push the, these coefficients to zero, whereas it's less abrupt with L2. Just the effect of the way of getting rid of the, the way, the effect of getting rid of the, um, the, the sign and the effect that it has overall. So this is TensorFlow, uh, Kira's code for performing this. So we're going to load the auto miles, uh, the miles per gallon, just like before, and drop the column that we do not need and set it up for miles per gallon just like we've seen in many of the uh, many of the other classes. I'm going to actually remove that. That does not need to be there. You normally have the input dimension only on the uh, only on the input layer. That's a copy and paste error that I just removed. So we are basically setting this up so that we have the 50, 25, 10 we are setting up the kernel regular regularizer and the activity regularizer so that we have both L1 and L2 going on. And you can... Okay, and now we'll continue looking at how we added L1 and L2 actually directly to TensorFlow. Now TensorFlow supports L1 and L2 to be directly added to the neural network. This link that I provided here shows you the actual documentation for doing this. But I will leave that to you to um, read if you want additional information on it. But for now, this works for reading in the auto miles per gallon. 
we are doing just like we did before. We will drop the name, we will encode the missing medians for the horsepower, and split out, based on miles per gallon, the X, which is the predictors for miles per gallon. And we will also split this into a training and test set. Now, if you look at the actual neural network definition, this is what's changing. And this is pretty, pretty similar. The model is sequential. And you are basically adding these dense layers to it. That's the input layer, 25, activation, and on upward. Here is where we're adding in L1 and L2 regularization. Kernel regular, regularizer is essentially adding a regularizer onto the weights of that particular layer, whereas activity regularizer is adding the regularizer onto the actual output of that layer. The thing is, you can add both L1 and L2, but you can't add them both onto the same thing. So per layer, you can only add L1 or L2 onto either, you can add L2 onto the kernel, onto the weights, but now you can't deal with the, um, with the output um, activity. So you have to put, or you have to put L1 onto one, L2 onto the other, if you're combining them. If you're not combining them, if you're just using L1 or L2, you can pick whichever one you want. And you can also add these across the layer. Here, I am only putting these on the final um, hidden layer. So this is just the way that I set this up for the example. If we run it, this takes a little bit longer to run, not much, because it is a neural network. It hits early stopping at 144, and the, the actual uh, root mean square is 3.47. Now we are, we're basically running, running this and we're not, um, we're setting up an early stopping monitor and simply fitting it. So the final neural network that we have is essentially the, as far as a train, but not necessarily the best neural network, like we saw in earlier classes where we can uh, we can make that modification and actually save the final one and reload it. Just refer to the previous classes to see how to do that. Okay, so that is essentially how you add um, how you add L1 and L2 to a to a tensor to a TensorFlow neural network in Keras. You can add them at each layer. And generally, this takes some experimentation to see what is really helping you there. Uh, this is something that I simply experiment with. I usually use Dropout more than I use L1 and L2, but these are all tools that you can potentially use on the neural network at, at each layer. We will look at Dropout in the next section, the next part.